What's going on you guys? Swifties Cove here. In today's video, we're about to be looking at Wrestlemania, Superstars Who Hated Their Attire. Now, I love Wrestlemania. I've been watching him for probably three, four years now. He's amazing. I will link his channel down below. Please go subscribe to him if you're a wrestling fan or if you're just not a wrestling fan, who cares? Subscribe to him. He's the best. Now, let me go ahead and get into this video. Don't mind the background noise. That's, you know, just don't worry about it. Let's go. A superstar's attire is one of the most important things about their presentation. Although the superstars in WWE have somewhat of a say in relation to what their gear looks like, they don't get the definitive say. And if WWE Chairman Vince McMahon wants a superstar to wear a certain attire in the ring, you would have to put personal preference aside and just simply wear it. Yeah. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE superstars who and hated Bianca their Belair. attire. She makes her own stuff. It's amazing. She's very creative. There's a lot of superstars who make their own gear too. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also be sure to check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, Mankind Original Mask. When Mankind made his debut in 96, the nature of his character was a mentally deranged miscreant I think I heard about in this. the boiler room of the arena. One of the key parts of Mankind's presentation was the mask, which would eventually become just as iconic as Mick Foley himself. Interestingly, the original mask that Mankind would wear was actually designed for The Undertaker, yep, but The I remember Undertaker that. rejected the idea, so WWE consequently used the design for Mankind. According to Foley during his A&E documentary, he loathed the mask. He stated that it was smelly and often uncomfortable to wear. Foley would even state that he would purposely go into the boiler room before his matches to get into character because this helped him put up with the foul smell which was emitting from his rotting mask. Like leather. Number 9, The Undertaker, his mask. In 1995, The Undertaker suffered an eye injury that was so mm. severe he almost lost it entirely. The dead man needed to protect his eye whilst it healed, so they wanted the dead man to wear a mask. Taker reportedly had a ton of reservations, as The Undertaker suddenly wearing a mask would be a huge change for the character, and it may ruin the mystique of it entirely. Taker wasn't a fan of most of the designs that WWE offered him, and he reluctantly settled on a Phantom of the Opera style mask. As soon as the dead man's eye had fully healed, the mask was immediately ditched, and Taker would never want to wear it again. Number 8, Ricochet is tight. A Ricochet in 2021 decided to wear jeans for his wrestling attire. This was a drastic change. I remember that. And according to the High Flyer, this was because it didn't make sense for him to wear flashy gear when he was there for a fight. Ricochet would discuss this change on Devon Dudley's table talk, and the one and only added, Basically, I just stripped away of the, uh, the not flash, I don't want to say flash. I just kind of set a goal. It's kind of like in, in Japan, like all the new kids, they start out with black boots, black trunks. That's all you get. Mm -hmm. You got to work your way up to get your gear. So it's kind of a minimal. Yeah. It's like a minimal. Right. I feel like at the same time, I feel like in the ring, I'm more direct. I'm going to come at you straight. So I'm just more like, I'm more in a, a mental state of like, I'm here in the ring for like business. You know what I mean? All right. So like, I'm here to fight. I'm here to fight. True. The entire change wouldn't last long as Ricochet would soon transition back to the flashy gear. Yeah. So it was clear that someone in upper WWE management wasn't impressed with the entire change. Number seven, Edge, borrowed gear. The WWE Hall of Famer Edge is a superstar who lost his gear on more than Top one occasion. Tier. On one occasion, Edge Happy. lost his gear prior to a house show in the summer of 2007, and this forced Edge to borrow another superstar's <laughs> gear. But whose gear, you may ask? Well, that would be the trunks of former WWE Tag Team Champion Trevor Murdoch. Murdoch and Edge have completely <laughs> different body types, meaning it was unlikely that Murdoch's attire would be a good fit. Plus, Edge and Murdoch had completely different attire styles. Definitely. Edge opted for the longer tights, and Murdoch wore the more traditional trunks. Edge no doubt hated the fact that he couldn't wear his original gear, but with Edge being a consummate pro, it unlikely affected his in-ring performance. Number 6, Jericho's tights. When Chris Jericho made his return to WWE in 2007, something was missing. His character wasn't just clicking, and everyone knew that Jericho needed a change. He would turn heel and completely alter his presentation. He would embark in a feud with Shawn Michaels, which was widely regarded as the best feud he, of Jericho's entire career. He really punched her right Jericho there. would begin to wear a he suit really ring, him. and he also changed from tights to trunks for the first time in his career. But Jericho admitted that he disliked wearing the tights in the era, as he didn't really fit with the newly evolved character. Yeah. He wanted the presentation to be a complete variation to his prior character, so naturally, he introduced the trunks, which was a welcome change. 
Number five, Triple H, Biker Shorts. Oh my god. Triple H was a face of Raw in 2003, and the game taking away time from the ring could have been bad news for the Raw brand. Therefore, when Triple H suffered a groin injury, WWE did everything they could to avoid Triple H taking time off. They combated this by introducing brand new gear for Triple H, on with the traditional trunks, and in their place were biker shorts. These looked rather odd, and fans weren't even aware that Triple H was hurt, they just assumed that this was new gear for the game. Triple H wasn't a fan of the shorts, and neither were the fans, and according to the Cerebral Assassin on Twitter in 2016, they were necessary, but without a doubt, unfashionable. The game tweeted, Compression shorts after a torn groin, necessary to compete, and unfashionable. Number 4, Dean Ambrose in trunks. But during Dean Ambrose's days in FCW, he would wear traditional trunks. This wasn't something that the former champion was keen on, and when he got to the main roster, these were ditched in favor of long combat pants and then eventually jeans. Yeah. During his 2015 interview with Sam Roberts and Kate. Those jeans definitely suit his character a lot. Uh, I mean, he was he, he was pretty much, a, his character was psychotic. And he, he wasn't deranged, he wasn't, I mean, he was crazy. You know, but that that was just Dean, and that, that's why you love them. Katie Leonard doll, Ambrose explained why he wore jeans for his matches. He revealed that it makes no logical sense for him to wear trunks, and stated, Traditional wrestling trunks come from like the 1920s, like George Hackenschmidt and Carl Gotch, because they were going to get really close and grapple and have like a 90 minute really tight wrestling match. That's like really old school wrestling, so they wore the trunks so they could slip in and out of holes, the way an amateur wrestler wears a singlet. It's very old school for old school wrestling, but in today's WWE and like what sports entertainment is and stuff, it's a whole different thing. It's almost like some kind of like urban combat. It's like, what are we going to be doing Sunday? We're going to be climbing ladders outside the ring, inside the ring, going through tables, you know what I mean? So I'm like, why would you be wearing underwear? It makes no sense. What kind of a man puts on underwear to fight? If I were in the bar and we got into an argument and I was like, all right, that's it. Let's take this outside. Take your pants off, let's go. And underwear outside right now. <laughs> it makes no sense. I always Number wanted three, that too. The Undertaker, his Survivor Series 2000 game. Oh my god, Survivor I, I Series heard this. 2000 was a special night for Taker. It marked the 10 year anniversary of the dead man making his WWE debut. And will be facing Kurt Angle for the WWE title. The real Although it was a monumental night for Taker, all fans could remember following the pay-per-view was his horrendous tights. The dead man would wear hideous snakeskin style tights. Those are the Godfathers. These would be worn one time and one time only, as even the dead man was clearly embarrassed by the unfortunate appearance. There were rumors that this was specifically made as The Undertaker wanted to wear something unique for the pay-per-view. However, it's a more common belief that The Undertaker had his baggage misplaced at the airport and he had to borrow the gear of his friend, The Godfather. Number two, Cody Rhodes, Stardust Attire. The Stardust character was one of the most infamous characters in recent memory. Cody Rhodes would transition into I can Stardust see it. in 2014 and for the most part, it was virtually a carbon copy of Goldust, albeit with a few minor differences. Cody had admitted oh, in a number of interviews that he strongly disliked the character, specifically the bodysuit he had to wear. Yeah. In fact, when Cody returned to WWE at WrestleMania 38, it was a set condition that the Stardust character would never be seen again. While speaking to Ariel Helwani for BT Sports' oh, wow. WrestleMania Live Review Show, Cody stated, There wasn't any true guarantees. There was a request. I said I never want to ever see Stardust ever again, and I never want to hear it and talk about it. I never want to see it, and it was a handshake, and that was all I needed. And the first thing I did in the match the last night was a random Stardust reference. I thought, what are you doing? You're going back on your own strange request. But other than that, it's complex to get this all together. Maybe one of wrestling's biggest contracts, which I'm so flattered about. I'm like, gosh, I'm happy. And I have a child, so yeah. And number one. Kane in his original mask. Really? The original Kane mask was worn by the WWE Hall of Famer between 1997 to 2002. Now, I do know that Kane said that he had breathing issues, which is why he transitioned to the open mouth mask, but I didn't know this. Let me see. Two, although visually impressive, it was incredibly restrictive, and it was reported during the early years of Kane's career that the mask made it difficult for Kane to breathe. Yeah. Therefore, in 2002, WWE decided to introduce a brand new mask for him to become a half mask, meaning that Kane's mouth would be clearly visible. See? This made it a lot easier for Kane to breathe, and the mask still managed to maintain the mystique and mystery of Kane's persona. Definitely. This new mask would only last a year, as in 2003, WWE made the controversial decision to unmask Kane to give the character a new lease of life. But there you have it, folks. A lot of people say that that destroyed Kane, but I think it made him better, except 
towards the like latter years of the unmasked cane, it, it started to decrease and stuff. KWWE superstars who hated their own attire. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content. Love WrestleMania. Uh, guys, that was WrestleMania. Uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe to his channel and your boy's channel. I've reached 300 subscribers. Um, we'll see what reaction we'll do next. And also, don't forget, no mercy.